What's up, guys? Gonna have a little shoulders and hams today. I always switch my split up depending on time of year, depending on what my focus has been. I've been trying to do a four day split lately, so I'll hit chest and tries, quads, rest, back and buys, shoulders and hams, rest, repeat. So we'll see, I'll do another week or two of shoulders and hams and see how I like it. I've never done that before. Last week I did hams first. This week I'll do shoulders first. I wasn't training shoulders as much volume and as intense as I used to because I needed to give my shoulder a little break. But although I feel like my shoulders are a strong point of my body, as I grow, um, focus goes to different places. Like I noticed my back was really, really strong back in 2016. And it's gotten bigger and it's gotten stronger, but the rest of me has grown. So it's always good to take a step back and see, well, you know, my sh shoulders are really great, but my chest is so strong, so big, it's overpowering. So from now to the Olympia, I'm gonna put a lot of focus on my shoulders, a lot of focus on everything actually. But um, there have been times throughout the year where I just stopped training certain body parts and just focused on the ones that I want to grow. Not only to give my joints, tendons, ligaments a rest, but also so my rest, food, recovery, and growth goes to those body parts. Like there's been times where I really just trained back, upper and lower, legs, front and back, quads and hams, and really nothing else. I did like one day, I just touched on arms, chest, uh, shoulders. So that's not a bad approach. Because keep in mind, if you train legs today, and you go train chest or back tomorrow, the food from tomorrow is mainly gonna get burnt and used up for that muscle. But if you're resting the day after legs, a lot of the nutrients and rest is gonna go to help grow, recover your quads. So you guys gotta think like that when you're trying to strategically create your splits or um, put certain body parts in certain days. Let's get after it. So, just warming up here, getting things moving. Um, the side laterals I did there, just a warm up, very light, 20 pounds. I don't know how many reps I did, but over 15, close to 20. But that's a great way to do that exercise because it takes out a lot of swing. One thing you guys see if you've been following me on Instagram, if you aren't, you better be, is that I focus a lot on controlling the weight. I still try to go as heavy as I can, but not using momentum or a bounce. And there's always a little momentum, always a little swing, always a little bounce in almost every exercise. The more you take that away, the more tension and the more work is placed on the muscle. So a lot of guys I see doing this, and it's putting a lot of tension on their lower back and it's taking away from their shoulders. But when you're stuck here, There's no swinging. You can't swing, you're just stuck here. And you can control the angle if you want. This is gonna hit a different part of the delt than this is. So it's a pretty cool variation. I like them a lot. 
and I'll do them as an exercise sometimes too. But today it was just a warm up. Juan gave me some of his wife's banging cookies. I gotta go thank him. He gave me caramel. You ever had that one, the caramel wafer? Bro, it's the best cookie. I gotta go thank him right now. It's the best cookie I've ever had. Oh, he's doing the set. It was really good. I haven't had a cheat meal in a while, so. I had high carb day on Saturday, so I didn't want to do the cheat meal on Sunday, which I normally do. So I did it last night. I had tacos, and then that cookie, and some dairy-free ice cream. I'm not, I'm not lactose intolerant, but one thing I realized is when you don't really have dairy much, which I don't anymore, it's pretty rough on the stomach when you do have it. So like I had ice cream like, I don't remember, maybe eight months ago, and I felt sick to my stomach. It was so heavy, it felt nasty. So we got those like Halo Top and all those other brands that are really low calorie. Um, if you mix them with Fat Free Cool Whip, they taste really good. Some of them taste too watery. But there's also Ben & Jerry's triple the calories but it's dairy free and it's really really good you wouldn't be able to tell the difference That cookie was insane, bro. Thank you. This guy sneaks me cookies trying to get me to gain weight. No, just kidding. This, the, the secret in all this size is the cookie dealer's cookies. Seriously, the best cookie, man. That, the way, I didn't eat the red velvet one, but I had the caramel wafer. Oh. See, if I don't eat them now, once I start prepping, I'm going to regret it. So I'll eat them now quick. I'm not going to, you know, give them too much. I know, you know, it's just a little bit. because It's I don't, addictive, I don't, I, man. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to crush his, um, I don't want to ruin, you know, his uh, off-season. Yeah, I appreciate it, though, man. You train back? Yeah. Uh, Kill it. Have a good workout, man. That used to be a warm up for me. I used to do like 140s. It's been a long time since I've, been, I've done these. Because of my shoulder, I was doing a lot of machines and hammers for chest and shoulders. So this is the first week I'm doing dumbbells. I've been getting a good workout with the machines too, don't get me wrong. But even just picking up the dumbbells when you're alone, over years and years of training, like I have some brachial radialis in the right arm. Kind of hurts in the bicep, but it's the brachial. It's not serious, but it just gets agitated and lifting a dumbbell doesn't, doesn't help it. So you learn to work around shit, you know? If I do something and it doesn't feel right or if it's heavy, I'm moving on. I don't need to do it. As long as I push myself and I feel like I got a good workout, it doesn't necessarily matter what exercise this particular I'm doing. 
And that goes for everyone, man. Pay more attention to how you do what you do than, oh, I have to do this exercise because Arnold did it. I have to do this exercise because Ronnie did it. No, nah, man. You can do one exercise for a body part, hypothetically. But if you train that body part, that exercise hard and heavy, and you do 10, 12 sets, you can have a good workout with just one exercise. I see guys do four exercises, half ass, 70, 80% intensity in bad form. What are you better off doing? That or one exercise proper for as many sets as it takes to get to near failure. Kabir asked me what I focus on, front delt or what. When you're on the slight incline, you got a little bit stronger. This is really hard, but it's okay to do this as long as you're staying rigid. You're pressing up and not doing this. See a lot of guys doing that. That's just an incline chest press. And when you're doing dumbbells, because of gravity, you're forced to push up. But when you're doing a Smith machine or a machine, a lot of guys will be like this, and they'll be pushing this way. But since it's in a machine and it's stuck, the weight's not gonna go forward, it's still gonna go up. But your power, your pressure is going forward. My brain is slow, I'm still catching my breath. But I think you guys get what I mean. So it's good to switch things up, but just make sure of your elbow position, that it's not like this, that it's nice, strong under you. Your elbow should always be under your wrist, whereas if you're doing a machine, you can easily do this, and you'll be pushing this way. But the machine is fixated in one plane, so it'll go up regardless where you push. So yeah, if you're doing the incline, make sure to keep your back flat. Don't do this and create more of an incline. I was much harder and leaner when I got back from Hawaii. I ate junk there, but I trained and, and did cardio fast and watch your back. Um, but I was looking pretty lean and then I gained a little bit of water because I started taking creatine again. Shit. Anytime you guys stop at the bottom of movement or give even a second, it's a whole nother ballpark. Even when you're going slow, right there, there's still a little bit of a bounce, stretch reflex, natural to the human body. And it's okay. I trained like that for years and got results. But if you just want to take it to the next level, and make the exercise that much harder without necessarily going up in weight, stop. 
Stop, cut out all momentum, cut out the stretch reflex of, that's natural to the body, and then start from scratch. Why is it we always need a lift on the first rep? You're fresh, you're, you're not tired. Why do you need a lift on the first rep? But two, three, four, five, six, seven, you can keep pressing. Because that first rep, starting from dead stop, is very difficult. You recruit a lot more muscle fibers, and it's very taxing. And that's why they're called dead stops. You guys have ever watched me train shoulders or give any tip about shoulders, you know that lateral raises are one of my favorite exercises if done correctly. Too many of you guys do some sloppy ass shit. If the arm is close to the body, it's easier. If it's all the way out, it's very hard. You want to have a slight bend in the arm. Same as dumbbell flies. This bend where this bend does not change. It just moves from here. This is the lever. The arm stays consistent in the bend. So you'll see a lot of guys when they do flies, they'll come down like this, total 90 degrees, because the weight's too heavy for them to hold it out here. It's not a fucking fly. Or lateral raises, you'll see guys doing this. There's no point of doing dumbbells. You might as well go do the machine. You want it out here and you want your wrist, elbow, and shoulder in a straight line. If the arm is up here, you didn't really lift the weight with the delt. You see, the weight's higher than the delt. You want it in a straight line, right there. Even if you come up higher like this, not like that. So usually bad form or incorrect form, not only does it lead to injury, but you're not stimulating the muscle properly. There's a big difference between weightlifting and bodybuilding. You don't need to get on stage in your underwear to be a bodybuilder. I was a bodybuilder 20 years and never even thought I'd compete. I was training for changes in shape and composition in my body. So 90 year old woman that wants to get in the gym and stay toned, you know, get a little, lose a little fat or get a little tight in the arms, slim the stomach a little bit, that's bodybuilding. A 16 year old kid that wants to get in the gym and get bigger arms and a big chest, that's bodybuilding. Unless you're strictly lifting for weight, weightlifting, powerlifting, pretty much everyone else is a bodybuilder. Minus the oil and the speedo. All right. Ugh. You like this? It's new from dark. It's the Ohana collection. I just got it today. Yeah. This, the new collection's sick. This is Ohana, that's what I was in Hawaii for. And then Till the Wheels Fall Off is next. You guys need to check it out. Darksport.com. The shit sells out quick, man. Everyone DMs me, oh, can you hook me up and get me this? I'm like, I can't, I can't even get it myself.
This is 20 grams of glutamine and one scoop of all nines from Dimatize BCAAs. It's branch chain aminos, but the other six amino acids, essential aminos that most BCAAs don't have. So I always have this within the beginning of my workout. I start sipping it throughout my workout. I'm not worried about losing muscle in the off season. I'm well fed, but I believe in constantly feeding the muscle trickling in glutamine and aminos for avoiding catabolism, of course, but <clears throat> fuel and recovery. Intro workout carbs are good too, but for me personally now, I don't, I don't eat that much because I got to keep my weight down in classic. So there's no point. But when I was younger and I'm trying to get as big as I possibly could, I did sip on carbs from the middle to the end of my workout. A lot of people argue if it's worth it, if it's necessary. You know, guys built amazing physiques in the past without it. Everything is basically splitting hairs. As long as you're giving 100%, you're not slacking. So, just a matter of what you feel works best for you. And also what carbs sits well for you in your stomach. Nah, it's upright rows. I am bent forward, but I'm hunched up. Basically, upright rows, when you hold a bar, anything closer than shoulder width, you have internal rotation of the shoulder when you come up, so there's impingement there. It's not exactly a natural movement. I did it for years without issues, but now it's risk versus reward, you know? If you're really close, when you come up, you're internally rotating. And if you guys just Google or ask any chiropractor with a brain, they'll tell you internal rotation is not good for the shoulder. So, and a lot of you guys are using too much traps anyway. So I, I do these sometimes. Just pull it straight up. And I'm not getting that internal twist to my arm and shoulder. If you did bend over completely or did it on incline, yeah, you could hit some rear delts with it. But most guys you see moving really heavy weight for rear delts, they're not even hitting their rear delts. They're using their triceps and their traps. Rear delts are really small muscle. It doesn't, doesn't need 60, 70, 80 pound dumbbells. better music to train with. You guys comment below. I like everything, but I like intense shit when I train. Like hard rock, even hip hop and rap, as long as it's like intense. 
I can't listen to like pretty boy bullshit music. No boy bands. the light straight across the back. How is it? it? The light is different in the back, the light, right? It's a, it's a little bit different. The specs on like the Zillow 60, I thought it was going to be like faster because the Carrera is faster. I can find out, do some research, but yeah, they don't change it too much. You're not thinking of getting it, are you? Uh, it's, oh, it looks almost identical. Yeah, like bro. The same in the back. Porsches like that. Yeah. You look at a Porsche from like the, the, the air cooled Porsches, my favorite Porsche 993. From a distance, you can mistake it for the newer ones. Yeah. That's what makes them so classic. They don't change. Well, that, I love that. It, the whole thing is like that. I don't have to look into it because it's like faster, but it's like. No, it's a classic. It's, it's like the, the, the Zero 60, like everything is like identical. It's just like slightly different on the body, yeah. slightly not much. And it's like not much of a difference for me to. You know, yeah, it's not a full re remodel. It's just like a little, little upgrade, like little th things they change. Wait until they fully redo it. Yeah, they said by twenty twenty five, all, all the cars are gonna be on um, electric. Um, electric. Uh, yeah. That's cool, but I don't know. There's something about gasoline yeah. motors. <laughs> but there's the, the electric's instant power. You seen the new Tesla? Is yeah. Is the, the Roadster? The Roadster, yeah. I've been seeing videos of that shit for a long time, but I never saw it on the street. It's, no, because it comes out, I think it's supposed to be launched 2021, but I mean, they had the, the, the models that they made and stuff like that, but like, I think the real launch. 1.8? Like, 1.8. Damn. That's the fastest zero to six. It's like an RC car. It just goes, boom. It doesn't need to like combust. Yeah. That's crazy, bro. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's a cookie. I had the cookie you last the cookie night. Pump. Yeah. I got a cookie pump too. <laughs> <laughs> you had one today? Well, I had one yesterday, but I might, I might have another one as soon as I'm here. <laughs> really? <laughs> we we're, all, we're all addicted to these cookies. <laughs> my balls I like this doing this reverse sometimes I see people doing some fancy shit with machines and I'm like but this is one that's good because it allows me keep my core tight my back flat a lot of us tend to do this when we do shoulders 
but also pay attention to placing in my elbow. When you do shoulders or chest and your elbows are here, situated here rather than here, it's safer on the shoulder and it gives you more power. So this feels really stable. And I'd say this is pretty much my last exercise or one more after this. So to make it harder, instead of just trying to go all out heavy, I'm uh, going as heavy as I can, but as you can see, dead stops. So I'm putting the weight down, starting from scratch. It's so much harder. Sometimes when I f hit failure, I'll stop putting it down and I'll just rep out like a normal set. And it really shows you how much harder it is. But I'm not slamming the weight down. I'm slowly lowering it and putting it down. You do that on almost every exercise. Some, you might have to use a machine. Bent over rows, you can do it. One arm rows, you can do it. And deadlifts too. A lot of guys slam the weight down on deadlifts and there's a bounce. And they lift it back up on the bounce. Put it down slowly, re-grip, and come back up. That's another thing that you benefit from dead stops. It gives you the opportunity to fix your form. All of our form diminishes throughout the rep range. I don't care who you are, unless you're like, holding yourself perfectly still and not really going heavy. When you go heavy and you exert yourself, sometimes we move and our form diminishes. That's what kills me when I have like a little tweak in my shoulder. It doesn't hurt so much, but it, it, it just fatigues quick and burns and kills me. Uh, move on to hamstrings. check my phone but up teen I'm helping in a classic physique competitor for the Arnold Classic I don't know if you guys could see off the phone he just sent me his update he's looking pretty good he's about four pounds away from his weigh-in weight just woke up so he's got that tired look on his face He's looking pretty good. Pretty he hard. From Iran? Yeah, but he lives he lives in Cali, but yeah, he came from Iran like seven years ago. 
I turned them pro this time last year at the Arnold Amateur. That's pretty good. This is waking up. So I'm slip on the flat side. You swim, Kabir? Swim? Are you good? So I used to swim when I was a kid with my dad. He used to take me to this Olympic swimming pool, Olympic size laps, and it's still there. So I went there the other day. I'm thinking of joining back up. I ordered a pair of swim goggles. Uh, just for like a different Different form of exercise, I think it'll help me with, first of all, conditioning, because that shit is hard. But also help me with my shoulders, maybe range of motion, strengthening them, and my breathing, most of all. I count when Olympic laps, there and back one lap. I used to swim like 30 of those. I swam one, and I was out of breath. And I, I breathed with every right stroke. And after the second lap, I couldn't even breathe. I couldn't wait to get my head out of the water. So that helps my breathing, helps control my breathing. My diaphragm is gonna help me posing on stage. So I'm gonna get back into that. Probably train two days, swim one day. Train two days, swim one day. Because my split is two on, one off anyways. But that shit is, that shit is tough. Because I sink. Muscles dense, so you sink, so I'm constantly like swimming upward. One of the older lifeguards is like, you can get these neoprene suits, like shorts that are thick, and it kind of has buoyancy, so it makes you float a bit. But I'm gonna do without it, make it harder on myself for now. Maybe we film that one day. Uh, guys can crack up watching me swim. I'm not bad, I just don't have the endurance now. Do something for the first time in a in a while or ever. It's a new level of soreness. That's how I feel now. I'm so sore. I swam. What's today? Tuesday. Tuesday, yeah. I swam on Sunday. Yeah. Everything is sore. Feels good though, you know. You look like on fire right now, man. Oh yeah? I still got the Hawaii tan. I got pretty dark in Hawaii. It's kind of fading though.
So I can't stress this enough. For calves, you guys gotta do full range. You gotta go all the way down, past the platform, past your toes, toes, heel. A lot of you guys go from here up and stop. All the way down, stretch the calf, get a deep stretch, stop, come back up. It's really easy to bounce. And if you guys are doing light weight and you're bouncing, your calves are not gonna grow. Think about it. Calves are getting work all the time. What kind of work? High volume, walking, stairs. They're always getting stimulated and worked. So if you do the same type of work, high volume, lightweight, reps and reps and reps, what's the, gonna be the difference? They're not gonna grow much. So you gotta attack them with a different stimulus. As heavy as you can, while good momentum, and good range, all the way down, all the way up. It's a pain in the ass though, I won't lie. Rich, you want it on large or medium? stretch a muscle, you're lengthening it and relaxing it. You're pulling the muscle apart and lengthening it. When you train a muscle, you're making it tense and you're shortening it. Complete opposites. It can be dangerous to stretch before you train. You can end up hurting yourself. Now, just a quick little stretch holding for a second or two won't, do, won't hurt you. But a static stretch, meaning holding a stretch for 30 plus seconds, is not a good idea prior to training. If you're very, very tight, no problem, a little bit. But to, to take time and fully stretch, like hypothetically speaking, do a yoga class and then go try to lift intense heavy weight, big no-no. So what you'd wanna do prior to lift, uh, lifting weights 
obviously warm up adequately and by warming up I mean breaking a sweat regardless if it's cardio or if it's two or three sets of a given exercise for high reps 20 plus reps you want to make sure you get the blood flowing you get the heart rate up and you start breaking a sweat meaning your temperature is rising so you're literally warming up but other than that if you guys want to go a step further you can do mobility mobility drills you can Google, you can check on YouTube. There's tons and tons of videos out there. They will help you warm up and also open up your joints, open up um, the given area, the given muscle that you're gonna be training that day. But full on stretching the way I'm doing here, sitting in a stretch, static stretching and holding it, working on flexibility. Never do that before a workout. Always after a workout. Uh, before bed is not a bad idea, especially if you guys are, are uh, very, very tight. Sometimes I wake up really tight, so first thing in the morning. And one thing that I've noticed now that my weight's heavier is since I've been competing every winter, the dynamic of my bed changes and I start like second guessing my bed. I've changed my bed like three times in the past three years. So the one I have now is a Tempur-Pedic and it's awesome, I love the bed. But again, come winter time, I noticed that it felt too soft for me. So I put a, a piece of plywood under it to make it firmer. And I guess that just has to do with the added weight. Although I'm not super heavy. My stage weight is about 215, but I'm re I never really walk around at 215. Even a week before a show, I'm 220, 225. And then this off season, I've gone up as high as 246. This pack, past week, I've been at the low 240s. So nothing too crazy. I won't let myself hit 250 or go heavier just because it's too far from the classic way in. Um, I don't see any, any real use for it. I don't like being that heavy, but the heavier I am, the more weight I have on me, the harder it is to get closer to striking distance of my weighing weight. So if I feel like I'm starting to get a little bit heavier or even a little bloated or sloppy, I'll, I'll clean up the diet a little bit more, a um, little, bit, little bit of cardio, and I'll pull back if I, if I feel like it's not needed. So always look in the mirror, always gauge with your eye, and also the scale. But the scale only tells a part of the story. Hope you guys like the workout. Comment below what you liked, comment below what you wanna see from me, and I will make you guys the videos that you wanna see, the workouts that you wanna see, some day in the life, some vlogging, some kitchen stuff. Till next time, guys.